have our seats. Amen. It is important for us to have a culture of saying thank you. I said it is important for us to have a culture of saying thank you because thank you is a multiplier. If you say thank you, you are a candidate of getting more. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And write it with the word. This morning, as we wrap up the year of redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers, I'll be speaking this morning shortly on redigging the wells of finishing well. Redigging the wells of finishing well. Redigging the wells of finishing well. We've been having series the whole of this year. This, that has been the word of the Lord. And we have been taught and we have been, we've learned and we've been equipped. And now I want to wrap it up this morning with redigging and repossessing the wells of finishing well. And I am in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 6. 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 6. Would you give it into us? The Bible says, as for me... My life has already, let us read it together. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. Verse number seven, the Bible says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained. Come on, let us read it together one more time. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. Verse number 8, the Bible says, And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm speaking on redigging the wells of finishing well. When we read this scripture, this is Paul who writes to Timothy, his son. By this time, Paul, uh, Timothy had left home ten, a, a decade earlier and he had been with Paul and he's considered, Paul considers him a faithful servant. When Paul writes the book of 2 Timothy, he's in Rome in a prison. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The historians say it is AD 67. He's in the prison and he, he notices that his time to live is near and he writes to his servant Timothy, his, 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 uh, his son Timothy and he writes to him, I have run, I fought a good fight. I have run the race and I have kept the faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, Buana as if you were sana. And therefore, when we read this, uh, this, this, uh, this portion of scripture, it gives us an, a picture of finishing well. It gives us a picture of finishing well. I want to submit to you this morning, beloved, that starting is one thing, but finishing is another thing. Starting is one thing and finishing well is another thing. When we look at the lives of our fathers, if there is a well that we believe God, even as young people, to redig, it is the well of finishing well. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. When we look at our father, Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice, we realize that they did not start alone. They were many when they started, but they are not many when they are finishing. They are those who lost the way. They are them that uh, they, they lost the strength to keep on running. And the question is, I pose to you this morning, will you finish well? This is a, someone when I thought about it, I prayed for myself that my God, I pray may you help me to finish well. Not only to just start well, but may I finish well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, starting is one thing and finishing well is another thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is starting well is important, but finishing well is more important because the reward is not on the start. The reward is on the Finish, blessed be the name of the Lord. Kama tunakumbuka wakati wa mitiani, ukikuwa number one, opening exam, hakuna mtu anajua. Eh, hey, situangeleshane. Well, you remember our high school exams? We used to have the opening exam, and then we have the midterm exam, and then we have the end term exam. Ukikuwa number one, opening exam, hakuna mtu ata. Atajua. Ukikuwa number one midterm exam. Hakuna mtu ata. Atajua. But it was important for you to make sure that in the end time exam, the end time exam, because your parents will be coming to reward you and there will be a cup or a spoon or a plate. It was important to finish well. Blessed be the name of Jesus. It was more important for you to become number one in the end time exam more than the, 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 the what? 
the opening exam and the truth of the matter is there are people who were number 1 in the opening exam but they were number 50 in the end term exam there some of us we used to get because we have come home and atujawai kutana na kitabu tukirudi shule tunagonga hiyo d4 dog <laughs> But because we know in the end term exam, we will take this report book to our parents or our parents will be coming to see us. We would try and work so hard and we would beat those people who, would, who beat, uh, be, uh, people who uh, they did well than us in the opening exam. Therefore, starting well is important, but finishing well is more important. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I pray for you. May you finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. It is important for us, even as young people, it is okay you have started well. You love the Lord. You bless the Lord. It is okay you've started well. But it is important for us also to think, how will I finish? How will I finish? For those of us in ministry, there are them that started with our fathers, but 70 years down the line, 40 years down the line, they were not there. And there are, those, there are people who we will start together, but as we move on, we may not end together. And that's why it's important for you to know where you're going and to focus on your assignment. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And, 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 and one of the things my dad keeps telling me is life is a battle, that you keep fighting. You continue fighting. You wake up each and every morning to fight. And life is a journey because we are sojourners. We are citizens of heaven. We are here temporarily. The question is, will you finish well? Will you finish well? I pray for each and every one of us listening to me. May the Lord help you that you will finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, may the Lord help you and help us. I pray for myself. I pray for myself. May the Lord help me to finish well in the name of Jesus. As I did my homework, there was a research done by a team of coaches called the Nation, the Coach Up Nation. It consists of over 15,000 coaches who, who coach athletes who coach the people who run. And this is the research that they have done. This is the research that they, are they have done, that there are two primary elements to running. Number one, the physical, uh, uh, the physical element, and number two, the mental element. And they say this, no matter how fit the runner is, he or she won't finish the optimum performance without understanding the race ta tactics and mental preparation. There are two elements to running. Number one, physical element. And number two, there is a mental element. And this is what I say. No matter how fit you are, if you do not understand the tactics of running, you, regardless of how fit you are, you may not do what? You may not achieve the optimal performance. Buenas Fesana. And if I put this into perspective in the spiritual context, this is what I understood it from my place. That you may have a great destiny. You may have a few Future that is already told like Samson. His future was already spoken by the angel before he was born. That is the physical, he was physically fit in this context. But if he, you do not have a physical tactic and a mental tactic, you may not finish the race well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Physical tactics entails the things around us, how we live, what to do to finish well. And the mental tactics uh, entails the th who we are, who we are in us, our thoughts our heart, our mind in the bonus for sana. Therefore, it is important for you to have a what? A physical tactic and to have a mental tactic for you to finish well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, finishing well, it's not about the physical, uh, it's not about the how fit you are, but it's about the tactics. Help me to preach your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, finishing well is about the tactics. It's about the ta. The tactics, you need to understand that how to, do I preserve my energy? How do I gain energy? Where do I get to get momentum? And how do I finish well? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have seen the athletes uh, in, our, in, our, in, in, in the Olympics that uh, when they start running, our members, they may not be number one, but they have understood the tactics. But when they're just about to finish, that's where they unleash the potential. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is understanding the words, the tactics. And therefore, this morning, I want to share with us 
four tactics of finishing well, having looked at the lives of our fathers and tried to study them. This is not all, but this is just a summary of what I have realized and what the Lord put in my heart this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For you to finish well, number one element that you really need to check is the element of relationship. If you are writing it down, one for you to finish well, the element that you need to check is the element of relationship. The element of relationship. One fact about life is that as you change your status, you change your relationships. As you change your status, you change your relationships. Buona sana. But it is important for us to realize and to know relationships that are, are divine and relationships that are des they, 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 they will add value to you getting to your destiny. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you look at the lives of our fathers, you realize they have friends who they have been together from 1972 to 2023. Friends who they have been together for 50 years. Ears. Buona sana. You need to have friends who keep you on check. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, make sure you have people who keep you on check. And you see something about life is as God continues lifting you, there is a possibility that you get surrounded by psychophants. There is a very high possibility that you are surrounded by people who adore you, they worship you, but when they see things go wrong, they continue clapping for you and they'll not tell you, boy, you're going wrong. You, this is not right. This is not right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But our fathers have been able to keep relationships that, that keep them on check. And you see, as human beings, we love people who applaud for us. As human nature, human nature, we do not like people who tell us this is not right. I pray for us. May we get an understanding that we need people in our lives who will keep us on check and will tell you, Rachel, you're not doing well. Brian, you're not doing well. This is not right. And they will make sure that you do not lose the way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. neighbor. Make sure that in your life, you're not surrounded by psychophants, people who just celebrate you, people who are just there to clap for you even as you're falling. You need people who, tell, who will tell you you are not doing right. This will help you to do what? To finish well. Bishop JB calls them accountability partners. And he says he has accountability partners in the ministry and also outside the ministry, people who keep you on check. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us look at 1 Kings chapter number 11 and verse number 1 to 4. 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse number 1 to 4. The Bible says King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabite, Ammonites, Edomites, Sodians, and Hittites. Verse number two, the Bible says, they were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not marry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Verse number, uh, we continue. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to loving them. Verse number three, the Bible says, he had 700 wives of royal birds and 300 concubines and his wives led him astray u jamaa alikuwa mzito jameni gonga jirani mwambie u jamaa eh shanga hata alikuwa anaenda huko kwa wao wote lini anyway that is not the point. The point is this, that these people, the relationship, he was told by God, do not interact by these people. Do not intermarry with these people because these people will change your heart. I submit to you child of God, relationships change people. Let me repeat it again. Relationships change people. If you, if you bring us together, people who we are friends, you realize that there are so many elements that we share, knowingly or unknowingly. Even how we talk, how we reason, how we speak, how we do things. Relationships change people. And God notices this and tells Solomon, do not interact with those people. Do not get into those relationships. Why? He knew that these people will change his heart. And did Solomon finish well? I asked, did Solomon finish well? Solomon did not finish well. We will read later in verse number 29 of uh, the same book of uh, uh, First Kings chapter number 11 that he, the kingdom was taken from him. And therefore, I want to submit to you, to you, child of God. This morning, even as young people, may the Lord help us to change our relationship, to check our relationships. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Gonga jirani mwambie neighbor, would you check your relationships? Ah, look for a believing neighbor and tell them, neighbor, for you to finish well, you need to know and check who you are walking 
with blessed be the name of the Lord and this portion of scripture it shows us that it is the wives of Solomon that led him astray I thank God I am in the youth service and the better the better part of the congregation you are not yet married as for me I pray for myself as I pray for you may we not get husbands and wives who will lead us astray uh, amen. Pastor Brian, I pray for you that may you not get a spouse who will lead you astray in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not get a spouse who will lead you astray in business. May you not get a spouse who will lead you astray in ministry in the name of the Lord. But may we get people who will lead us towards and closer to God. May the Lord give you good people who will lead you closer to God. If they found you fasting for 10 days, may they encourage you to fast for 20. If they found you waking up at 5, may they encourage you to wake up at 3 in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. May it be so end to you as it was in our fathers. They got good spouses. Eh, see, our fathers got good spouses. And the Lord helped them. The Lord who did it for them is still alive and he changes not. Therefore, I pray for my brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice. May it be so unto us. And I'm the first one to receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Same relationships. For you to finish well, you need to check your relationships. I'm sure you have people who will correct you. Number two, for you to finish well because of time, you need to maintain a humble, a correctable, and a teachable spirit. You need to maintain a humble, a correctable, and a teachable spirit. You know, success comes with a type of arrogance. I to Success in Akujanga na Kakiburi, the Nebuchadnezzar spirit. Daniel chapter 4, verse number 20, 29. Would you give it unto us? Success comes with a form of arrogance. When the Lord lifts you and you lay your hands on the limb and they walk, there's some, they, if you're not careful, there is an arrogance that, 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 that comes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We read it together. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, verse number 30, the Bible says, he said, is not this the, let us read it together, is not this the great Babylon I have built as a royal residence by my mighty power for the glory of my majesty, verse number 31, even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. Uh -huh. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. Verse number 32, the Bible says, You will be driven away from the people. You will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like an ox. Seven times will pass by you for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign all, all, over all kingdoms on earth and gives you to anyone he wishes. King Nebuchadnezzar, there is a Nebuchadnezzar syndrome. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, success comes with a Nebuchadnezzar syndrome. Where you think it is me who has built. Where you think it is me who has achieved. Success has a type of arrogance. You may not know it, but there is a likelihood for us to think when we make it in business, when we make it in ministry, in whatever sphere that, uh, of life that we are in, there is a likelihood if you are not careful to think that this is my own strength. I have done this by my own power. Buona sfe sana. Lakini mungu sio amolo. Mungu sio kamau. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar? He was made to eat he was made to do what? To eat grass. And for us, it may not be literal eating of grass. If you're not careful, if you do not maintain a humble, a teachable, and a correctable spirit, you may move from grace to grass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray that this shall not be a portion of any one of us in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help us to maintain a humble, a teachable, and a correctable spirit. Go neighbor. 
even as God lifts you, may the Lord help you to maintain a humble and a correctable spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You get to understand that it is not by might, nor by power, but it is by his spirit, says the Lord. That I have not done this by my own effort. It is not because of how brilliant I am. It is not because of how at working you are. It is not because of how hard you worked, but it is the doing of the Lord. May the Lord help us, Shiloh Worship Center, to maintain a humble, a teachable, and a correctable spirit. The Nebuchadnezzar syndrome has already started getting in you, and it removes people from grace to grass. And the prayer that we are making for people is that we will not move from grace to grass, is that the Lord will move us from grass to grace in the name of Jesus Christ. He moves us from strength to strength. So you know I'm going to say, and what I'm my father, my God. Help me to maintain a teachable and a correctable spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. That shall not become arrogant. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 8, the Bible says that the end is better than the beginning. And patience is better than pride. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. I pray for us, even as God lifts you, we will maintain a humble and a correctable and a teachable spirit. One of the things I love about our fathers, by God's privilege, I've been able to interact with him. He's a humble man. Giving us an opportunity to speak, even in, this, in, in such services, is humility. Not that he cannot speak, but he has allowed us. And that's why God has continued elevating him. That is an element of our fathers. Therefore, as we redig the wells of our fathers, may we finish well. May we maintain a teachable and a correctable spirit. As the Lord lifts you, may you maintain a teachable, a humble, and a correctable spirit. Number three, for us to finish well, we need to maintain our focus. We need to maintain our focus. We need to maintain our focus. I am in Philippians chapter number 3 and verse number 13. Philippians chapter number 3 and verse number 13. The Bible says, this is Paul writing to the church of Philippi. And he says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it. But one thing I do is forget what is behind me and straining forward towards what is ahead. Verse number 14, the Bible says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Verse number 15, the Bible says, all of us then who are mature should take a view, such view of things. I repeat that again. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. For us to finish well, child of God, we need to maintain our focus. And Paul says, I forget everything that is behind me. I forget the past successes. I forget the past victories. I forget the past business successes. I forget the past promotion. I forget my degree. I forget my master's. I forget my PhD. I forget that I led praise and worship here and the presence of God was evident. And one thing that I do is I press on towards the mark. I press on towards the mark. The mark of finishing well. The mark of ending well. I pray for you, child of God, that we will lay down our crowns. We will forget everything that is behind us. We will forget our past achievements. We will forget our promotions. We will forget our titles. We will forget who we are. And we will press on towards the mark. We will press on towards finishing well. We will press on towards ending well. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is the prayer that I'm making for everybody. Under the sound of my voice, may you lay down your crown. May you lay down your crown. May you lay down your title. May you lay down your promotions. May you lay down your education and may you focus into Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray in the name of Jesus for everybody under the sound of my voice. May you not lose focus of where you are going. May you not lose focus of where you are going. May you end well in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. 
lift up your hands and pray my father and my god uh, may you help me not to lose focus uh, may i keep on moving uh, may i keep on forgetting the past pain uh, may i keep on forgetting bitterness uh, may i keep on forgetting the offense that is behind me and my press on without getting tired uh, may i press on towards holiness uh, may i pray, press on towards righteousness uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, even after getting married uh, may we not lose our focus uh, even after getting that promotion uh, may you not lose that focus uh, even after god lifting you may you not lose that focus uh, i pray in the name of jesus uh, for everybody under the sound of my voice uh, may the grace of god be released to you that you will not lose focus uh, but you shall press on in the name of jesus uh, somebody say amen maintaining our focus one of the things that happens as God lifts us is we change our focus and we forget where we are headed to and we start looking at the things, the empires that we've built and look at the achievements that we've made and look at who we are right now. We consider the cars that we are driving. We consider who we are, we are married to. May the Lord help you. Even if you get married to a president, even if you get married to whatever you get married to, even if you get where you are getting to, you become a CEO of whatever organization. May you never lose your focus in the name of the Lord. Our desire is to finish well. Last but not the least, this is more important. Even as we are pressing on towards finishing well, we need to maintain our intimacy with God. We need to maintain our intimacy with God. For us to finish well, number one, we've talked about relationships. We've talked about number two, a humble, correctable, and a teachable spirit. Number three, it is what? Maintaining our focus. Number four, for us to finish well, like our fathers have done, it is for us, we need to maintain our intimacy with God. Chance, most, most of the times when God lifts us, things mambo yanakuwa mengi. And that's where we find that we have no time to pray. We have no time to read the word. We have no time to commune with God because we are busy. But I pray for you to finish well, child of God. Do not forget the God who lifted you. Do not forget the days where you came here and cried out to God. Do not forget the days where you came for the midweek service. Do not forget that those days you went for the home cell. Do not forget for the days that you went to the mountain to pray and fast. Do not forget, maintain your intimacy with God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One of the things that I admire about our fathers is still in their busy schedule, we will still go to Nakuru and pray for the whole week. They would spend time there praying and they will be there themselves, born as Fesana, a whole week. They still have pastor's conference where they go there, they pray, they teach, and they have not lost their intimacy with God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of Jesus. Even as the Lord lifts us, as we redig the wells of finishing well, may we not lose the intimacy with God. If you lose God, you've lost it all. You can write it down as I wind up at that. If you lose God, you've lost it all. If you lose God, you've lost it all. It doesn't matter what you've achieved. If you lose the intimacy that you have with God, you've lost it all. I am in First Kings chapter number 11 and verse number 9. Let us read it together. First, number, uh, First Kings chapter 11, verse number 9. Now this is King Solomon after he has intermarried with the, the, the wives who the Lord had told him not to marry. This is, what the, the, this is what happens. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had been turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who appeared to him how many times? Twice. God did not appear to Solomon once. He appeared to him twice. Verse number, we continue verse number 10. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. Verse number 11. So the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded to you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and I will give it to one of your subordinates. I will give it to one of your subordinates. The truth of the matter is, if we lose our intimacy with God, there are people who are below you right now as we start, who you will not see them as you finish. You will not even be able to reach them. Utakuna sema, ule tulikuwa tunanzanga na ye. Ule tulikuwa na ye pale Shiloh Worship Center. Ule tulianzianga na ye pale. If we lose our intimacy with God, we will certainly not 
end well. And the Lord says to, Sol to Solomon, I will surely tear down the kingdom. I will surely tear down everything that you've built. And Solomon, in all his wisdom, Solomon with all his ability, Solomon the, diplom the diplomatic leader, Solomon who had built a temple for the Lord, the kingdom was taken away from him. He did not finish well. Child of God, I pray for you. May we not lose the intimacy. May our hearts be towards the Lord in the name of Jesus. That every day, even when you're lifted, you will cry out to God that create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, but renew a right spirit within me. Give me a loyal heart. I pray for you, child of God, that you shall not lose your intimacy with God. You will still be the director, but you shall still wake up in the morning to cry out to the God of heaven. You shall you shall be that great person but you shall cry out to the God of heaven you shall be a great minister but you remember the Lord who lifted you from the mighty clay and set your feet upon the rock that the Lord will lift us and give us finances but we shall not lose it we shall not lose the intimacy that we have with God I pray for you who is listening to me as I pray for myself may we not lose our intimacy with God in the name of Jesus Christ may we keep running May we keep holding on and to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you open up your mouth and pray that, oh God, create in me a clean heart, oh God, as you continue to lift me. May I not forget the God who lifted me. May I not forget where you brought me. May I not forget the, the mighty clay where you lifted me from. May I not forget that you are my refuge as you lift me, my God. May I not forget Jesus because if I lose you, Lord, I have lost it all. I pray for myself, oh God. May you not allow me to finish well, oh God. To finish unwell in the name of Jesus Christ. May you grant me the grace, oh God. To maintain the intimacy with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do not allow me to lose the secret place. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you lift me, I shall still get back to you. To get back to the place of prayer. Get back to the place of thanksgiving. Get back to the place place of supplication Shaka talabo zoko tolo mayanda rabo shatalaba rabo zoko tolo ma. This is the cry. I am praying for everybody under the sound of my voice. The cry to my generation. I pray may you help us, Lord, to finish well. May you help us, Jesus, to finish well as our fathers have done. I pray, oh God, that we shall not lose focus. We shall not lose focus in the name of Jesus Christ. Yaka talabo zoko. Katalama Shakatalama Reko Zoko Tolo Mayanda Rako Zakatala Mayanda Riko Sakatalaba Lord grant us grant us the grace uh, to finish well uh, in the name of Jesus uh, that we shall say like Paul uh, that I have fought a good fight uh, I have run the race uh, I have kept the faith uh, I lost my mom along the way but I have kept the faith uh, I lost my dad along the way but I kept my faith uh, I lost everything along the way but I kept the faith uh, you lifted me Jesus uh, but I kept my faith uh, you brought me out of the mighty clay but I kept the faith Faith, oh Rabba Seketele Masha Katalaba, Rako Zoko Tolo Mayanda. I became bitter, but I kept the I kept the faith. They left me, but I kept the faith. They forbid me, but I kept the faith. Oh Rabo Zeketele Masha Katalaba. The going got harder, but I kept the faith. There are times that I was discouraged, but I kept the faith. There are times that I was disappointed, but I kept the faith. There are times that I was hard. Broken, but I kept the faith. Oh, Rabba Seketele Masha Katalaba. Help us, Jesus, as we are redigging the wells of our fathers. Help us to finish well. Help us to finish well. Help me to finish well. Help me to finish well. Child of God, would you cry out for your sake? Oh, Rabba Shakatalama and Rebozo Kotelema. 
Lord, I know you have lifted my ministry, but I want to finish well. I do not want to lose it along the way. Oh, Rabba Zeketele Bosha Katalaba, Rako Zeketele Boshata, Rako Zeke Masha Katalaba, the cry that I'm making for your children, even in this youth service, for everybody under the sound of my voice, may they finish well. May we finish well. May we finish well. May we finish well. That 40 years from today, we shall be still loving you. 40 years from today, we shall still serve you. 40 years from today, we shall call on your name, Jehovah. Come on, child of God. Nobody wants to finish wrongly. Would you call on the name of Jesus? Oh, Rabo for the sake of this generation. Raba seketele bo shakata la ba, rakozo koto lobo one more minute. Lord, I want to finish well. I want to finish well. Raba seketele bo shakata la ba, rakozo ketele ba yanda, ya kozo koto loba. May you grant me relationships that will keep me on check. May you bring people who will help me to finish well. In the name of Jesus, may you give me a humble, a correctable, and a teachable spirit in the name of Jesus. Jesus help me to finish well. May you grant me the focus. Help me maintain my focus in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray may I not lose the intimacy that I have with you. I shall not forget the secret place. In the name of the Lord may we finish well. <laughs> may we finish well. In the name of Jesus, even as we wrap this up, in the same second Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 7, in the message paraphrase, would you give it unto me? The Bible says that this is the only race worth running. The Bible says that this is the only race worth running. Child of God, any other race is in vain. This is the only race worth running. Even as we wrap up the year of 2023, I bring the name of Jesus. May you not forget that this race is the only race worth running. It is not worth running after finances. It is not worth running after a spouse. This race is the only race worth running would you be up standing on your feet and cry out to the god of heaven that lord help me help me help me i do not want it to be said that once upon a time there was paul who used to preach i pray may you help me like our fathers may you help me to finish well i cry out to you the god of heaven because i know you will lift me i know that you will change me i know that you will make me a voice to the nations i pray oh god also for the grace to finish well would you lift up your hands and just cry out to the god of heaven child of god cry out and pray that lord may you help me to finish well for one minute in the name of Jesus ministers of God who are in the house and you under the sound of my voice this is a prayer that you ought to make for yourself this is a prayer that you ought to make for yourself the grace to finish well the grace to finish well the grace to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ we bless you Holy Spirit In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the hearing of your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word is true. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that we shall finish well in the name of Jesus, that you shall give us relationships that will keep us on check in the name of Jesus. The people who are supposed to be in our lives, you shall bring them. And the people who are not supposed to be in our lives, you shall take them away in the name of Jesus. I pray for each and everyone under the sound of my voice that Lord, you shall give us a humble, a teachable, and a correctable spirit. I pray for everybody who is under the sound of my 
my voice uh, that we shall not lose focus but we shall keep focus looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith I pray that Lord Jesus we shall not lose uh, our intimacy with you in the name of Jesus Christ father be exalted and be lifted because you are God and there is none who is like unto you would you lift up your hands and just give God praise for his word in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus look for somebody and tell them neighbor as we wind up the year of redigging come on look for a neighbor and tell them neighbor as we wind up the year of redigging and repossessing the wealth of our fathers I pray for you may you redig the well of finishing well in the name of Jesus look for somebody else and tell them neighbor may the Lord give you relationships that will propel you to finishing well Look for somebody else and tell them, neighbor, may the Lord help you to maintain a humble and a teachable spirit. Look for somebody else who can you be a neighbor. I pray for you. May you not lose focus in the name of Jesus. And look for a final neighbor and tell them, neighbor, may you maintain your intimacy with God. And even as we wind up this year, the year of redigging, I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that we shall finish well. Uh, as we travel to our, our festi the, the festival seasons, uh, may you finish well uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, as you crisscross the, 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 the country, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that you shall end this year well uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and even 40 years from today, 50 years from today, 30 years from today, we shall still be satisfied the Lord, uh, the God uh, of our salvation. Uh, would you lift up your hands above your head uh, and celebrate Jesus?